Hi, I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here today with Roy Zer, founder and CEO at Thrive DX, a global cyber education company with a commitment to reskilling the workforce and upskilling the industry in cybersecurity. Roy, welcome. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you. It's great to be here. So, Roy, to get started, I want to know a little bit about your background, uh, your education and military service. You went to school at Tel Aviv University, and you served as a military intelligence officer as a major for Israel's esteemed Unit 8200. Presumably, this prepared you for a career in our field? Yeah, I got the skills from the military, so I didn't know I'm going to get like a job in cybersecurity. I was kind of like clueless before I joined the, the unit. I just knew I, you know, I have a position there. And then I've learned how they can take someone from, you know, zero to hero in a short period of time. So I've learned a lot of the skills in the unit. And um, one of the most important things I think I got there is actually the right mindset. And like the, um, like looking at, at cybersecurity from the attacker perspective, which I think is very important. So that's what I took with me to the career later. So you're the founder and CEO of one of the most highly regarded cybersecurity companies uh, focused on upskilling and, you know, doing a lot of very innovative work uh, to help with the worker shortage. Give us some background on the company, uh, a little bit about when you founded it and maybe some key milestones leading up to today. Yeah. So before I founded Cybint, the company, and then changed the name of Cybint to Thrive DX as it is today, actually Cybint was an idea that was born in the military. The, the military experience while I saw it, well, I, I was identifying how we can take cadets, like 18-year-old high school graduates with no experience in cybersecurity, and reskill re them into different positions in cybersecurity and cyber intelligence. That's where the idea was born. Then I left the military about 10 years later. I decided to bring this to the industry. I started the company called Cybin first, which was a training company focusing on training uh, companies and organizations and government agencies. And then I actually took it to become like a product company, like a startup company, um, not just training the people and the organizations myself, but actually providing them products to, to do that. And just recently in, in the last a few weeks in, in, of, of this year, we actually partnered with a bigger company in the education space called HackerU and created together and joined forces together to build a bigger uh, solution that we call Thrive DX. I'm well, very familiar with HackerU, a great uh, partner for sure. So let me ask you about the labor shortage that we're suffering through. Uh, right now in this year, 2021, we have around three and a half million unfilled cybersecurity positions globally. Mm -hmm. And that's up from a million positions in 2014. So we've known about this problem and yet it just keeps growing. Why are we in such a dire situation? I think there are three main reasons for this situation. One is the external circumstances. The external circumstances, not just about cybersecurity in general, the world is going digital and there are more access points and more devices and more networks. And of course, a lot of the uh, crimes will move online. That's even before the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. I mean, COVID just maybe accelerated some of these situations. Now, on the other hand, um, or at the same time, you also have, um, I think, lack of awareness in the market. Although we, you know, we keep talking about it, and, and your magazine is writing about it, and you're leading this thought leadership, I think, globally. But this is still something that many people don't understand and don't understand the, the huge necessity in cybersecurity professionals. So when people think about career paths, I think that cybersecurity is still not something that most people would consider. There's still something a bit unknown about this field, even in within IT. You know, a lot of people are choosing other fields like um, software development, etc. But cybersecurity is still this unknown area for many. So we still need to educate the market about the, the need of developing talent there. And in addition to these two problems, both the external situation and the lack of awareness in the market, is the fact that this is also an ever-changing field. So what you studied or the skills you acquired two years ago, or maybe even a year ago, sometimes becoming a bit dated. So you need to up, up, 
upskill yourself and update your uh, your capabilities um, more, much more in when in other positions. You know, you, you make some really good points, Roy. Um, you know, I remember reading something in the MIT Technology Review. This was a few years ago in 2018, but I think a lot of it is still true. And they were saying that fewer than one in four people are qualified for the positions that they're applying for. So what happens is a lot of employers are, you know, being knocked for not being open-minded enough, uh, not changing their requirements. But at the end of the day, you do have to have some, you know, cybersecurity background, some cybersecurity skill in mm-hmm. order to, you know, help a lot of these companies. They're, they're not always entry-level positions. Yeah, definitely. I mean, th- this is something that the challenge is not just in the in the beginning of the funnel. It's not just in the entry-level positions. The channels are, you know, it's continuing throughout the career. Uh, we see in, in discussions from entry-level SOC analysts to CISOs in leading companies. They all struggle to keep up with the pace of change. They all struggle to acquire the necessary skills. And the skills are different. I mean, of course, the experienced CISO probably doesn't need maybe the basic hands-on skills on network security. But now they need to understand risk management differently. They need to understand how to manage different technologies and resources. So this is something that the, the, the demand or the, I would say the necessity of having um, enough cybersecurity skills and qualified people within the organization is just going to grow. You know, your company can really help with one of the messages that we've been promoting here ourselves. Uh, We we don't sell products or services. We just want to see this problem go away. And the message has been that every IT position is also a cybersecurity position. It has to be. Uh, Every IT worker, every technology worker, they need to be involved with protecting and defending apps, data, devices, infrastructure, people, this idea of having a separate cybersecurity team, while mm-hmm. that's great and there should definitely be a separate team, not so separate that the IT organization isn't combating the threat as well. And they seem like the natural crossovers. Yeah, definitely IT professionals are, I would say, the first group of people that should consider shifting or growing or changing. It's not necessarily a growth position. It can be just moving to a different position in cybersecurity. And this is something that if we think about how to solve the talent shortage, then yeah, there are millions of IT people, IT professionals, that they could be you know, the first resource that we can, even within the organization, identify and reskill to a new position or to a similar position, which is in the security space. Now, the thing is, I think that in general, cybersecurity is a skill, not just as a position in cybersecurity, is something that is required by many different professionals within the organization. You think about a a typical organization, then the cybersecurity professionals, of course, they need the cybersecurity skills. And the IT professionals, as we discuss, of course, they need the skills. But also the developers, you know, the R&D team, they need the skills for secure coding. And the compliance officers and risk managers, they need the skills because a lot of the challenges are cybersecurity challenges. And the executives need the challenges, the, the skills, because they have different challenges in making decisions that are in the context of cybersecurity. And even the general employees, they need cybersecurity skills to protect against awareness, what we, sorry, against phishing, like what we call awareness or other types of, uh, you know, phishing challenges, fear phishing challenges. So it's just changing the, the way, changing the paradigm, changing the way we think about cybersecurity as a niche to something that is actually much broader in the in the skills that every organization need today. So you have such a deep background, Roy. I'm curious uh, your opinion on this. I don't know that I have uh, as obvious an answer as I do to some of uh, you know the other aspects of this problem. So today's cyber fighters and even our most experienced cyber fighters. Uh, are they resourced to combat AI and machine learning exploits, or can they be trained? And, and does that worry you? I think that you know AI, ML, all these buzzwords that are becoming part of our reality right now are affecting, of course, many fields of our lives, including cybersecurity. In the context of cybersecurity, we can look at it both from the defensive side and the offensive side, or kind of like as a shield and as a sword. And on, on the one hand, 
cybersecurity professionals need to be trained and need to understand how AI and machine learning can help organizations, can help them to do their job better. You know, from spotting the right malware to identifying and detecting anomalies, a lot of things that's been tedious work of analysts can now be replaced with um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. It doesn't mean that the human skill or the people that are working are not required, just their job is a bit different. And that's where we also need to provide skills for the future workforce in cybersecurity to be able to work with the different tools that we have and improve, of course, the different um, capabilities that the security team has. At the same time, we also need to think about the, the offensive side, like how the attackers, the hackers, the hacking group are also using AI tools to perfect their attack mechanisms, to identify and to bypass different defense mechanisms. So this is going to be um, a, a very challenging situation between the attacker um, on the one hand and uh, the defense team on the other hand. And definitely our cybersecurity professionals, they need to be equipped with the skills and the tools to, uh, to be able to use it. I guess if it comes down to bot versus bot, there's still people yeah. behind the bots. So yeah. good point. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So let me ask you about uh, Israel, who has a very special place uh, in the cyber ecosystem. Uh, you come from the country. Uh, I believe yep. the country is living proof that cyber skills can be taught and learned by a massive number of people. In fact, such a tiny nation and Israel is the world's number two exporter of cyber technology. Not a lot of people know that, and it, it's fascinating w when you think about it. Are the lessons that the rest of the world can learn from Israel? Yeah, at first, it, it is pretty amazing that Israel, which is a country of like 9 million people, is only second to the US, not per capita, I mean, in general, in cybersecurity companies and export of cybersecurity technologies. To, to the best of my knowledge, the Israeli industry is about 20% of the global cyber industry. So if you, right. even if you take like China, Canada, UK together, I think there are still less than the Israeli industry. So in cybersecurity, of course. So this is, this is really, these are really amazing numbers. I think that if we can learn, um, I, I think I have two main lessons that we can learn from, from Israel in that sense. One, and this is kind of like um, the concept of necessity is the mother of invention. I think that um, Israel, and without getting into any political issues, Israel in a, is a, in a very challenging pos position, in a very challenging situation. And a lot of its um, defense, it's based on the fact that it can protect its digital assets and its critical infrastructure. And many of the uh, young Israelis, they actually see cybersecurity as a path, as a career path, also from a way to defend, defend the economy, defend the nation. So there is some something in the education from very young age in Israel that you know teaches people and, and the young, you know, the, the future workforce that cybersecurity is something that you aspire to. Like this is something that you want to become part of. This is not like a boring analytical position that some people would think that, you know, what is cybersecurity? So I think one thing we can learn from that is to use the fact that cybersecurity has such a huge effect or cyber crimes and cyber attacks have such a huge effect on our lives and educate people from a young age to understand the importance of that. And I think by that, we can you know, provide the right motivation and incentive for young people uh, from school age to young adults to be able to, you know, think about the next solution, the next startup, the next technology in cybersecurity. So that's one thing. That's kind of like from the bottom up. And also top down, um, the Israeli government or governments throughout the years identified cybersecurity as an industry to invest in. So the government is actually putting a lot of emphasis on this indus industry, both by providing the right funding in some cases, but also the right environment um, and the right situation or, or circumstances to allow cyber companies to thrive when, in, in this current situation. Right. Well, and the message is absolutely getting back you know, here in the U.S. Uh, our military is Israel's uh, number one customer, biggest customer uh, yep. insofar as cyber technology 
And then we're seeing uh, a large amount of venture capital outside of Israel uh, coming from the U.S. and other countries going into Israeli cybersecurity startups. So Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the U.S. VCs and U.S. Uh, different funds, not just in cybersecurity, are the biggest supporters of the Israeli innovation and Israeli startups. So I, I definitely think that this is something that is um, coming from the U.S. to Israel and from Israel to the U.S. So there are a lot of um, re the relationship between the not just the countries, but also the industries, the cybersecurity industry in the U.S. and in Israel are very, very close. So I want to talk about partnering. You mentioned HackerU. Historically, your company you know, has had a, a partner ecosystem that's been part of your strategy and you really have to, you know, for this to spawn out, for this to reach a bigger audience, especially when you're doing something as innovative as mm -hmm. you are, you have to have partners. So talk to us about that. Yeah. So even before uh, we partnered with HackerU and now growing into Thrive DX, um, even as Cybint, we understood from the first day maybe that we are stronger together. And not as a cliche, we understood that we, uh, you know, the few people from Cybin cannot solve the world problems alone um, in cybersecurity. So we have to partner with a lot of other smart people, companies, organizations to solve this problem. So our collaboration and partnership approach is based on the fact that first, we are actually working with the current education players in the market, meaning that we partner with universities, we partner with community colleges with private companies, vocational training institutions, et cetera, et cetera. And we actually license them our solutions. So it's not like we are competing or trying to replace them, but we are actually working within the current ecosystem. And at the same time, also working with uh, business organizations from MSSPs to cybersecurity technology companies to integrate their knowledge and skills into our learning systems. So for example, if you want to teach skills in, let's say, for example, um, threat intelligence, then of course we at Cybin Thrive DX now have the threat intelligence experts, but it makes sense for us to partner with other threat intelligence companies in the market um, and bring their expertise into our systems. So that's kind of like part of the partnering approach. It means that we want to make sure that we are at the heart of the ecosystem. We want to connect the dots but not necessarily we think we know it all. We want to bring also other thoughts, other ideas, other skills from other partners in the market. Well, we're excited to be partnered with you and amplifying your thought leadership. We've been following your company for quite a few years now and excited about what you're doing going forward. So thank you so much for joining us today, Roy. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And also, we've been following your magazine and your writing for the past few years. And I think your thought leadership and the information you shared with the world is a critical element in, the, in solving this problem, bringing this also to the level of awareness for the general public, to the companies, to the industries, to the governments. So also thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Joining us today was Roy Zer, founder and CEO at Thrive DX, a global cyber education company with a commitment to reskilling the workforce and upskilling the industry in cybersecurity. You can keep up with all of our media at cybercrimemagazine.com.